Well, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Dialogue with the Dean. I'm Eric Barker, Dean of the Purdue College of Pharmacy. It's great to be with you this afternoon, and thank you for being with us. Along the way, during this presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to post those in the comment section there on Facebook, and we will come back to your questions at the end of the presentation and try to address those before we sign out. But uh, again, thank you for being with us. It's my pleasure to welcome a very, very special guest to the College of Pharmacy today, Mike Babinski, Vice President and Director of Intercollegiate Athletics here at Purdue University. Mike, thank you for being with us. Uh, it's great to have you over in the College of Pharmacy. The air outside is not quite turned to fall uh, yet, but we have the, the students are back on campus. There's an energy and excitement on campus. We know uh, what's uh, coming ahead, and, and so we're, uh, we're excited to see what's going to be going on in Purdue Athletics and the, the year ahead. Um, I was ju we were just thinking, uh, it's what year is this for you? This is my fourth school year here at Purdue, which oh is incredible. God. Um, it's just hard to believe. If you'd asked me, I would have said you've just been here a couple years, like two years. <laughs> so much has been accomplished. I mean, there's been so much going on in athletics over your, your time here. It just, I, I, it must feel like you, you, you never stand still. No, we're, it's, it's been a fast moving three years in the books to this point, and I, I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity to be here at Purdue and, and grateful for our team in athletics that's worked so hard to help us move things in a good direction. We're not. We're not where we want to be yet, but we're, we're, we're heading in a good direction. I feel, feel very good about that. Well, that's exciting. As we move into the fall, uh, students are back. We know there's lots going on across uh, the variety of athletic programs. Um, we'll talk about football in a minute. Sure. Uh, but there's a lot going on in men's and women's basketball, uh, women's soccer, baseball, volleyball. Tell us what maybe some folks can expect out of Purdue sports here in the year ahead. Sure. I think as I, as I look ahead at the year in total, I, I, I think several of our teams are poised to have really sort of big step forward type years. Uh, not that they haven't been successful in the past, but I think several of them have really been building to a point here where we're going to see a nice, uh, nice competitive step ahead in, in the season. And we'll begin tomorrow night with our women's soccer team. Uh, the University of Georgia Bulldogs will travel up from Athens, Georgia to play uh, tomorrow night out of Folk Field at 7 p.m. And uh, it's a great and challenging way to start the season. Uh, but I think our young ladies will be up to the challenge and ready for it. Uh, we've got a, a still a very young team, but one that has you know, really been, been, been aggressively recruited, recruited to. We've got really, really talented young folks. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching them compete tomorrow night. I'd encourage people to come on out. It's fun out at Folk Field to watch soccer, particularly on the heels of a great summer with our U.S. Women's National Team and their success. I think soccer is sort of in the forefront of people's minds. So if you get a chance, tickets are free. It's uh, usually a, it's a beautiful night out there typically and uh, I encourage you to come out and watch our women's soccer team get going. Not short, uh, not far behind will be volleyball. Our volleyball team will open up uh, Labor Day weekend here on, uh, on campus and volleyball right now I think is picked uh, 17th in the country to start the year. And as several of us who have watched practice a little bit say, if there are 16 teams better than us out there, my gosh, I'd like to see them because I think we're, we're very, very talented. We've got a great blend of, of veteran, uh, veteran players who, who know what it's all about, but some really talented freshmen and sophomores that I think will uh, create a, a, a really a, a exciting time in Holloway Gym this, uh, this fall. We, we typically sell out our games. There's great energy. There's great life in there. It's, a, it's a, an awesome sport, fast-moving, competitive really athletic. It showcases the athletic ability of, 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 of these young women and uh, the Big Ten is the best league in the country. So you'll, you'll see great sort of national caliber volleyball in there and uh, I encourage you to come out and watch that. It'll, it'll be a lot of fun. That's great. Uh, just by chance I was sitting on a plane about six months ago or so next to the father of one of the soccer players yeah. and he was carrying on about how much he enjoys uh, watching his daughter play at Folk Field, and so to that point, yes, uh, yeah. family and friends uh, enjoy it. So I hope the fans will come out and, and support the, the soccer and volleyball teams. No question. Um, coming through the summer, uh, certainly those of us in Boiler Nation watched uh, with a lot of pride as uh, one of our own uh, Carson Edwards mm. uh, really had a chance to shine in, in Boston preseason, and, and uh, it's been a, it's been fun to watch this ride for Carson, hasn't it? No question. You know, following the heels of his superhuman performance <laughs> last March uh, yeah. in the NCAA tournament where he went you know, 42 points in, in two out of three games, yeah. which is unheard of at, at that, with that level of competition and, and with that sort of pressure on you. Uh, to see him make a, what we believe was a really wise decision to, uh, to enter the, the NBA draft this year, his, his, his stock, his, his value would probably have never been any higher. And 
and he will finish his degree, by the way, for those that are, <laughs> that are interested. It's important yeah. to him, it's important to his family, and that, that will get done in the, in the years ahead, just as Caleb Swanigan did this past right. year. He graduated in August, which we're like, very proud of. But, but watching Carson in the summer league do some of the exact same things he did in March was really, uh, was really fun, and uh, I know we all get a, get, a, get a kick out of watching his, his unique talent, his fearlessness, sort of that, that, that mentality of you know, take no prisoners out there and, and, and have no conscience as a scorer, That's which right. sometimes you have to do. Uh, so we're excited about what he'll bring to the Celtics, the, the chance to watch him continue his career, for all of us to see uh, with a coach that we all know in Brad Stevens with the Celtics, you know, an Indiana guy yeah. and, uh, that we all, many of us in our, in our department know. I know I've known Brad for years and have great respect for him as a as a coach, as a, as a person. And uh, Carson couldn't be with a better better organization. So we're excited to see his future unfold. We are very very excited yeah. to, for NBA season and, yeah. and, and see how that unfolds. Yeah. It is exciting. One of the things we get to do here is when we get to watch. Uh, young players here at the collegiate level yeah. and then as they go on to that next level and we get to follow that it's sure. one of the fun things in our college community here uh, that we we really do have a chance to do it's, it's part of the fun thing part of college athletics it is you know we, we had our beginning of the year event the other night with all of our student athletes and i told uh, them as i said i look around this gym and i see all americans i see future all americans i see future olympians future professional athletes and we've got we've got all of that here at Purdue, so it's really, uh, and, and obviously the, the, those that go on to be professionals are a very small sliver of, yeah. the, of the pie, uh, but still it's, it's an exceptional opportunity and something that is a point of pride for us for sure. The other thing that uh, I, sometimes I don't want to get lost is the impact that athletics has on the academic yeah. side of the house, and um, I've told folks over and over again <laughs> when I see coaching staff members, don't, don't lose sight of what you're doing on the field having an impact on the academic side of the yeah. house. When there is excitement on this campus uh, for any of our athletic teams, it carries over into our ability to connect with our alumni, the sure. excitement on campus. And so uh, certainly from this dean's perspective, we're very appreciate, appreciative of all the work that goes into the athletics uh, uh, and, the, and putting our teams together and getting them on the field. Sure, and, and we recognize that that's part of, that's part of our role, quite honestly. Yeah. Obviously, we want to provide a tremendous experience for the young people that are in our program. That's, that's job one and priority one and, and always will be that they have a great academic and athletic experience. But beyond that, uh, when we're successful, and we certainly are striving to be successful, we recognize that that helps open doors and have meetings take, accept it easier and phone calls return a little that's quicker. Right. And uh, it, it does help the whole in, in, in a very nice way particularly when you do it like we do it at Purdue, with, with true students, with the highest possible integrity uh, in, in, the, in, a, in a wonderful league like the Big Ten, uh, with, with associated with great schools. I mean, that's a, it's, it's a great thing and a great source of exposure and identity for, for, for Purdue, and we're, we're, we're happy to play that role and trying to do our very best at it. Talk about football. Uh, just a few weeks yeah. before kickoff mm -hmm. here at ross Aid. Uh, maybe share with folks what you see in, in sure. this football team for the season ahead and a little bit about the recruiting class this year and what's coming next year. Sure. I, I would tell you that I, as I watch football, and I get a chance to do this frequently, I'm out of practice uh, about every chance I get. I stop in for a little bit uh, during each day, and you know, I've, I've seen a clear progression, a, a, a sense of development that's, that's obvious to me as I even – I'm not a coach. I mean, I've never coached football. I was a college baseball player. I coached college baseball, but I – I've never coached football. I played it in high school, but uh, but I can see clearly a, a, a progression in terms of the level of talent, the physical development, the skill development, the intensity, and and sort of understanding of the game. All of that is being developed in our young guys by Jeff Brom and his coaching staff in a in a really really apparent way. Are, are we fully there yet? We're we're not all the way there yet. We don't have the depth that we'd like to have at every spot. Uh, maybe on the on the offensive line, defensive lines, we're not as deep as we'd like to be. Uh, maybe a couple of other positions. Do we have enough talent to be to take another step forward this year? I, I absolutely believe we do, and I believe we will. Uh, we proved last year that when we're right, we can compete with the very best. Right. Last time I checked, Ohio State lost one game <laughs> last year. They were twelve and one, right? and, and we know who that one was. So we we are capable when we're when we're focused and we're doing things the way we we're capable of doing them of achieving at a very high level. Now it's about consistency and doing that every Saturday, every time we take the field, being at our very best and never never having one of those off days where we just don't don't quite bring it uh, the way the way we need to to be successful. So I'm I think we'll uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see that start to grow this year. Uh, the recruiting class that arrived, it's class of 2019, 
three or four of whom got here in January, enrolled early, graduated from high school early, and enrolled early, uh, have a chance to be real impact players. I mean, they several came with sort of college football ready physical traits, which is really unique. But I, how these young guys are developed at 17 or 18 years old to play college football, it's amazing to me the work that they must have done at a very early age. But but we have several that I think will, will play and, and play significant roles for our team this year, uh, which is really exciting. I mean, to have, to have freshmen that are capable of you know, understanding the playbook, understanding the speed and the pace and the intensity of the college game, and being able to contribute right out of the box is uh, – is not a common thing. That's a very rare trait, and uh, we're, we're going to have some of those guys this year. And I'm I'm very excited about that. And one of the things that the Ohio State game did for us last year was really help us from an identity and, and profile perspective. So as we recruited or began to recruit for the class of 20, uh, and we can't talk about specific players because they haven't signed yet, and we can't do that. But but in general, uh, again, not unlike what you mentioned with uh, connections with your alums. Interest is higher. People return phone calls easier. They they, they, they respond to our, our inquiries about, our, hey, what, what about Purdue? Would you be interested in Purdue as an option for your athletic and academic career? And so, you know, I, we feel really good about the progress we're making for 2020 and uh, look forward to finishing that job in December when, when they're able to sign their, their actual commitments. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, just real quick, so I've, I've had questions already. Tickets are still available for single games, correct? Tickets are still available for single games. One of the one of the big steps for us in our program, and I'm and I'm very we're all we're all very grateful for the Purdue for Purdue fan base and it, and its sort of reinvigoration and resurgence around our program. It makes a difference. I mean, it absolutely makes a difference when our team takes that field, and there's a a, a full house in Ross State Stadium. The energy boost, the, the the feeling that you get is is palpable. It's real. It's tangible. And it also helps recruiting. You know, when we bring young guys on campus with their families, and they look around and say, wow, it's a full house. Look at the energy in the stadium. It, it makes a big difference. Uh, so, so finishing the job and, and, and selling all these single-game tickets and, and making sure that we've got great crowds every time we take the field is really important. Uh, we're anxious to get that done, and, uh, and, I, and I think our fans will respond. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to a really exciting year in Ross State Stadium. Well, so if you don't have tickets and you're wanting to see the Boilermakers play this fall, I'd encourage you to go ahead and get those tickets now because we do anticipate many of these games to be sold out, if not all of them. Uh, as that would get, be the goal. As we yeah. get through September here, so as we get into October and November, uh, better to buy those tickets now. And so we encourage folks to do that. And let's pack that house yes, and, sir. and bring it uh, when, and, uh, as fans. And so that's exciting. So Absolutely. let's talk a little bit about Ross A. Sure. A few weeks sure. ago, an announcement made of a, a significant effort to do some renovation over at Ross A. Yeah. Many folks may not have had a chance to either hear or read about that yet. Tell us what the plan is and what we can sure. expect. So we've spent the past, about the last eight months or so uh, working with an architect uh, firm to develop some concepts, some sort of 30,000-foot broad concepts about what Ross A. might look like as we move forward and, and envision it for the next 30 years or so. Um, the board, our board of trustees here at Purdue, in, in early at their August meeting, approved us taking the next step, going from concept design to now what's called schematic design, where you really get down into a much more detailed level of, very, of specificity, and, and really coming up with a design that you can then take to the marketplace for costing and, and will support our fundraising efforts. For us, it's about trying to accomplish a couple goals. Uh, we, we want to provide a modern set of amenities for our, for our fan base. Uh, right now, Ross Aid's a, a nice place to watch a game, but is it the most modern in terms of food and beverage, in terms of connectivity, in terms of restrooms and, and storytelling in, in and around the stadium? It's not. Uh, so we, we, we'd like to address all that and be more responsive to what we believe fans want in, in a game day experience these days. Uh, secondarily, we'd like to connect the concourse all the way around to Ross Aid. Uh, so right now, you, know, you, you sort of yeah. run into a, a wall at, at either south end there. Yeah. Uh, so we'd like to find a way to connect that concourse uh, build an appropriate structure in the south end zone to provide a, a variety, to serve a variety of different needs, uh, some of which would be additional seating options, whether it be mid-level premium, uh, uh, but maybe even a, a brand new student section. Lots of different things we're thinking about in that south end zone, but there are lots, lots of possibilities. And then finally, uh, addressing the concourse in general. Right now when you walk out of the stadium into the con onto the concourse, you are disconnected from the game. You can't see, you're staring at a wall. Um, We'd like to peel off that upper level, create a brand new mezzanine deck uh, that will allow allow you to be connected to the game every time you step out of your seats. And that's uh, 
that's the way lots of stadiums have yeah. gone these days. All the new baseball parks, all the new MLS stadiums, lots of NFL stadiums have created that open concourse look, and we think that's something that really speaks to what fans want these days. They don't want to be disconnected. They want right. that experience to be continuous from the time they arrive here. So as we look at that, uh, we, we think we have lots of, of exciting possibilities. Renovating the pavilion and our current premium seats, that would be part of it also. It's just time. It's, it's 15, 16 years old at this point, and, and, and things need to be refreshed. Uh, but it's, it's sort of a multifaceted approach. It'll be a very significant and heavy lift from a funding perspective. We're going to raise every dollar privately to do this. That's the way this is going to get done. Uh, so our team will be working really hard. We're going to ask people to support us in, in very significant ways. But we believe it's, 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 it will get done. We believe people will be excited about the possibilities and about the ability to position Purdue football. And even broad, more broadly, I mean, having Ross Aid be a wonderful asset day in and day out for our community would, would be a great thing. So we're going to try to design it with more broadly than seven days a year use. Uh, we, we like it to be a, a facility that, that has, has impact throughout the year. And so if we can accomplish all those things, we, we think we'll have a heck of a project here in a couple of years. Best case scenario, you would kind of hope to wrap up what three, four, five years? Yes, sir. That 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 that's a time frame that we'd like to stay within that for sure. Uh, you know, we'll probably have a, a good year of, of schematic design. Yeah. Uh, it, it'll take that. It's a complicated project when you sure. renovate a hundred, nearly hundred year old structure. <laughs> you're you're going to see some yeah. things and yeah. find yeah. some yeah. things that you don't anticipate. Yes, but you uh, but it, it'll that'll give us time to really get underway with our fundraising efforts and hopefully have a really good sense of where we might land here at the beginning. Usually in our conversation, yeah. I take a few questions from our guests. Maybe you've sure. got a question or two for me. I sure do. Uh, and I, I stare at this lovely jersey of uh, one of our really an alumnus that we're extremely proud of, Joe Shopper, who was much more than a punter for us. Uh, <laughs> more it, than a punter. It, it, absolutely. Yeah. Joe was a football player. He, yeah. was, he was a punter slash football player who, who will be always, always remembered for some of those big plays that he made, both throwing passes and Catching passes, do, doing all sorts of things, like making tackles. Uh, and, uh, I can re still hear in my brain him getting hit at the Ohio <laughs> State game when he ran for that first down. I will. I don't know that I'll ever forget the sound of that crack. <laughs> as, as he basically <laughs> helicoptered, if I recall. But but he but he held onto the ball yes, and he, he got did. he got it done. But uh, so we know that you know, our athletes in general have a uh, you know we, we ask a lot of them. We yeah. obviously ask a lot of them. It's it's a very time intensive schedule from an athletic standpoint but they've got to manage their academics first and foremost. And so doing so in a program like pharmacy, which we know like lots of programs here at Purdue, require, asks a lot of young yeah. people, how does somebody like Joe manage that? Well, uh, there's no question at Purdue, regardless of what program you're in, as you alluded to, we're a very academic rigorous institution yep. and we're very, very proud of that. And so regardless, I think we look up to our student athletes and it's a, it's a marvel at, at what they're able yeah. to do. And I think you, there's some wonderful stats about success of our student athletes. Um, in pharmacy specifically, we don't have a lot of athletes typically, but when we do, they're usually extraordinary individuals. Yeah. I would put certainly Joe in that category. Yeah. We had Tate Kitchell, a swimmer, mm -hmm. uh, who Great just wrapped swimmer. up her yeah. senior year, won the, uh, was awarded the Big Ten Medal of Honor, which is a tremendous honor uh, in, at, in at Purdue Athletics and in the Big Ten Conference, and so very proud of her. From what I see, there's, you know, when we talk to those students, there's a couple things they have to do. One, they gotta be extraordinarily disciplined. They really do have to be very structured in their approach to what they do on the field and what they do off the field. And, and that doesn't give them as much latitude as it may give some of their friends. So right. then in hand in hand with that is that they have to make some sacrifices typically. Uh, their buddies may be going out and doing things or hanging out, you know, watching Netflix or, <laughs> or playing uh, video games or doing other things. And, and they can't do that sometimes. And so right. they have to make those sacrifices and, and go hit the books so that they stay up and keep up with the rigors of, of the, the academic program. And so there's no question uh, that our, our student athletes have to have a lot on their plate, yeah. uh, but we're very, very proud of what they accomplish uh, both on the field and off the field. Well, that's, that's great. And, and you know, we, we in athletics provide some degree of academic support ourselves. Right. We've got a, a wonderful facility that we just opened last spring down in the, in the basement of the Breeze Building that, uh, that's all about academic support and, and tutoring rooms and small group instruction rooms and all of that. So we try to do our part but we also recognize that even with that, once in a while, some flexibility and some accommodation from the, the different colleges and, and, and disciplines on campus are helpful. So I wonder, can you in pharmacy once in a while work with our athletes to help them make it make it all all, all feasible? Yeah, absolutely. I think you know certainly from my perspective, being at Purdue for 20 years, yeah. I've had numerous athletes come through. In fact, my 
very first uh, couple years here, we had two football players, yeah. which is very rare yeah. uh, for us uh, to have one, let alone two. Yeah. Uh, but I, we recognize that our student athletes are tremendous ambassadors for Purdue mm -hmm. on the field and off the field. And so we want to do what we can to help support them. We know they're, they are making sacrifices. Right. Uh, and so we try to be as flexible as we can uh, to work within the parameters of what we're given to be able to do, to tap into those resources that athletics provide. Sure. So if they're on the road, what can we do to ensure that they've got the materials or whatever it is that they need to keep up and to be successful uh, in the classroom. And so we, we take that very seriously, but we want to support those uh, that are giving a little extra to the university uh, and are making those sacrifices on behalf of, of uh, the athletic program and, and the university. And, and we're very, very proud of those folks. T to that point, um, last May, and that's why this jersey is here, yeah. um, I got an email from Joe Shopper, and he said, I want to come by and see you. Can I do that? And I said, well, absolutely. And so he came by, and he had this wrapped package, and he goes, well, I want you to open this. So I opened it up and, and wrapped it, and it was one of his jerseys. And he said, you know, they gave us three. Uh, I kept one. I gave one to my mom and dad. But I want the College of Pharmacy to have one to keep. That's and awesome. we're going to hang it in our, in, in our suite. Uh, he said, you guys have been so supportive of me in, in the program. And that really does speak, I think, to the, the culture and the mindset that our faculty and staff have of, of our student athletes, but really all our students, but particularly those uh, that are giving a little extra. So we'll be, we'll be displaying this up in the, the pharmacy box during yeah. games. And our alumni will be able to celebrate awesome. that. Uh, while we won't get to celebrate Joe's accomplishments on the field uh, from the box this year and cheer him on, and it was always exciting when he was on the field for us in the in the pharmacy suite, um, we, we look forward to uh, – and actually, he'll be in the box with us at homecoming. Nice. Uh, pharmacy, uh, for those who, who don't know, pharmacy will be uh, be the featured college exactly. at the homecoming game. You know that. Uh, yes, and our that. former our former football players – I'm going to kind of give a spoiler here, spoiler alert. <laughs> our, our former football players are going to be back and are going to lead shout uh, before the fourth quarter. Wow, how cool uh, is that? And so we've got a cohort yeah. of those, and Joe will be part of that cohort that will do that. So we're excited to see that as we move into the fall. That's great. And, and Joe doing this obviously speaks loudly to – the experience that he had, the positive feelings that he's got about the experience, that's a, it's a wonderful gesture and one that I think is, is very much Purdue. It really really says a lot about who we are. Absolutely. We are certainly very, very grateful. Yeah. So, well, I'm very grateful that you spent a few minutes with oh, us thanks for having today. Me. I appreciate uh, it. Maria, any questions over there at your end? And I see none. So we will say thank you to those that have viewed. If you are watching this later at a later date, please, and you'd like to ask some questions, please feel free to ask some questions. We'll come back and we'll We'll try to uh, answer those. Again, uh, football season kicks off September 7th. It's okay, Vanderbilt, yes, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have one under our belt at that point. We'll be on yeah. the road at Nevada, Nevada. on next yeah. Friday and then back home on the 7th. And yes. 7th, Vanderbilt. At noon. And, and, uh, high noon. And Vandy is, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this, I'm, a, I'm an alum of Vanderbilt. Oh, my gosh, uh, brother. So we're going to have to check uh, you. But, but, you know, when I moved check here, your garb I had, that I had, well, it's all black and hey, gold. You're right. You know, you're so. right. You can, you can be in disguise. <laughs> but, uh, well, so, um, <laughs> but we, we look forward to seeing Vandy up here and yeah. seeing the Boilermakers on the field on September 7th. I do want to encourage people, make plans now to be here on homecoming October 12th. Yeah. It is going to be an extraordinary weekend yeah. here on this campus Lots as we things. wrap up this 150 years of Giant Leap celebration as we've celebrated Purdue's uh, anniversary this this uh, year. But uh, there are lots of things going on. The Maryland game, of course. Get yeah. those tickets now. I, is That game might be close to being sold out. If it's, uh, it's not done yet, but yeah. there's still some room. So okay. please, please. But, but give make me plans that. now to be here on October 12 uh, for homecoming because yeah. it's going to be a tremendous week. And I think all Boilermakers are going to want to be a part of it uh, on and off the field. So we hope you'll do that. So, again, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next month. And as always, hail Purdue and Boiler Up. <laughs>